Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to welcome the governor back to Utica. And today we will hear from Assemblyman Anthony Brindisi, Senator Joe Griffo, and finally Governor Cuomo. I'd like first to welcome some special guests who are with us today. Our County Executive, Anthony Pacenti. <laughs> Mayor from the City of Utica, Rob Palmieri. <laughs> Mayor from the City of Rome, Joe Fusco. <laughs> and our Minority Leader from the Oneida County Legislature, Frank Tellerino. Thank you, everyone, for being here. As you know, Governor Cuomo is here to sign a budget bill. But from the beginning, this has been much more than a budget. It's a reform plan that will transform New York and fundamentally change the way the state does business and serves the people. And it was on time. I told the governor they weren't very, very often on time when I was in the legislature. The mandate relief and historic pension reforms will save Oneida County more than $630 million over the next 30 years, lowering the cost of government for taxpayers and helping to hold the line on property taxes. Thanks to the governor's leadership, New York is now better positioned to invest in communities across the state in order to create good paying jobs. And we are showing what can be achieved by working together. Now I am pleased to introduce Assemblyman Anthony Brindisi. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for being here this afternoon. And, and thank you to Governor Cuomo for being here. Governor, I gotta say, I've, I've been in the legislature for seven months now, and it's, it's truly been an honor and a privilege not only to, to watch in action, but to be able to work with you and to work with your team uh, to turn New York State around and bring it back towards a path of fiscal responsibility and economic prosperity. So thank you for your leadership. You. Under Governor Cuomo's leadership, we have seen a turnaround in Albany and New York State. For the second year in a row, we have passed an on-time, balanced budget by working together with the governor in a bipartisan manner. While holding the line on spending, this budget includes the New York Works Program, which will invest $33 million in the Mohawk Valley to help build and repair roads, bridges, parks, dams, and flood control facilities. New York is implementing a teacher evaluation system to bring achievement and accountability to our schools. We're expanding the DNA data bank to solve and prevent crime and to give our law enforcement the tools they need to keep New Yorkers safe. And we're, we're reforming our public pension system to save the state and local governments $80 billion over the next 30 years. This investment and our investments in infrastructure will create good jobs for the people here in our region while also investing in our community by revitalizing regional treasures like the Glimmerglass State Park. This is just one of the many investments in our communities that will move our entire state forward. I want to thank the governor for working together with the legislature, and I look forward to continued progress, building a better future for all New Yorkers. I'd now like to introduce my favorite senator, Senator Joseph Griffo. What an honor and a pleasure. Uh, well, listen to that. <laughs> it was Easter <laughs> and Passover. What an honor and privilege it really is to have the governor with us today. And governor, I want to say to you, it's always uh, fun to have you in uh, central New York, particularly here in Utica. But there was a lot of clamor today when uh, the newspaper yesterday said Cuomo to visit uh, Utica. And I wondered why all these students were so excited. And I talked to a few of them, and they thought Chris was coming today, <laughs> his brother Chris. But no, we always, uh, all the people in this room are very happy to have you here. I was wondering if you looked at where we've come as a state, and you look at another big event that occurred yesterday, the Masters Tournament, uh, and when Watson uh, had to make uh, that final shot out of the trees and off the uh, pine straw, it looked to be such an extraordinary challenge, and as a result of his effort, uh, he won a, a championship. And it was a time here not long ago in this state 
where we had speeches without substance, uh, where we had rhetoric which produced no results. No one got along. Nothing significant got accomplished. New York lost the faith of its residents. And then we had an individual who put himself forward as a candidate for the office of governor, who articulated a vision, who proposed ideas and developed a comprehensive plan to improve this state. And he went to work to accomplish these things upon the first day of taking office. And he assembled an extraordinary team. Governor, I want to commend you publicly because we have our favorite daughter here, Roanne Destito, but you have truly assembled a quality team to work with you, both on the second floor of the Capitol and in your agencies, and we appreciate that. So 15 months have brought historic changes with substantial progress and accomplishments that we can all be proud of, a restoration of integrity, a reestablishment of competence, newfound respect and renewed confidence in the ability of this government to work and to deliver for the people that we all serve. When people yell at each other, no one hears. But when we talk to each other, we listen. This governor has reached out. He's reached out to communicate with the members of the legislature and groups across this state. He has forged consensus, produced results in a bipartisan manner, ending gridlock, all too familiar, on the political landscape across this country. And today, we're here to celebrate a fiscally responsible budget, finished ahead of schedule, with spending restraints, no new taxes, initiatives to jumpstart this economy and to create jobs. Just in our area alone, New York Works will spend $30 million in this region, improving eight bridges, including rebuilding the bridge in New Hartford over Route 8, 216 miles of of road projects, 35 million for the north-south arterial here in Utica over the next two years, and a commitment from the state to the repairs after 2014, which will be for $62 million. Yes, New York is functioning again, and it's because we're working together, and when we work together, we can do anything, Governor. Thank you. Thank you for your vision. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for your tireless efforts and energy on behalf of the people of this state, and most importantly, thank you for your leadership. I give to you our great governor, Andrew Cuomo. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Well, it's my pleasure to be here today at Utica College. I'm also recovering from the weekend, as is the senator. People had a good Easter, uh, a good Passover. I think I ate for seven consecutive hours yesterday, so I'm moving a little slow today. Uh, but to Utica College, thank you very much for having us. To Dr. Hutton, let's give him a round of applause for his... Thank you very much. And I'll tell the students who were here what a great guy Dr. Hutton is. You know what he said to me inside? He said, I feel so good that, that students are here. Any student that shows up is going to get five points extra credit in the class. Isn't that great? <laughs> Give him a round of applause, Dr. Hutton. <laughs> to Senator Joe Griffo, who I've known for many, many years. I've worked with him in a number of capacities. Uh, he is an extraordinary senator, not just for his district. You know that. Uh, but his leadership goes throughout the entire conference, and he is a great leader for the entire state of New York. He's personally been kind to me uh, and been a, a great colleague. Uh, when we had tough issues, he was always there as the voice of compromise and reason. Let's give him a round of applause, Senator Joe Griffo. <laughs> that new shining face, Assemblyman Anthony Brandisi, as he says, I would say Brandisi, but it's his name, so we'll say Brandisi. Assemblyman Anthony Brandisi, pleasure. <laughs> and your favorite daughter, who was a great assemblywoman for many, many years, but then we, she had a higher calling, and she was so good that we said, you can't just help Central New York, Utica, you have to come help the entire state. And she is doing a phenomenal job. I know you miss her, but she's doing a great job for all of us, just on an expanded basis. Now, great Commissioner Rowan Destito. <laughs> yeah. 
And County Executive Anthony Pacenti, pleasure to be with you again, and Mayor Palmieri and Mayor Fusco. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> well, you heard what today is all about from Rowan and the Assemblyman and the Senator. We started, we signed the budget, uh, which we are going to ceremonial, ceremonial sign right now uh, in a moment. Uh, but the budget was really a reform plan. And this year's reform plan is really an extension of what we've been doing for the past year. And the senator said it very well. When we started a year ago, the state of New York had serious problems, almost on every level. The economy was in trouble, as it was nationwide, but it was worse here in New York State. Um, the housing market had collapsed, as we know. There was a sense of desperation in the economy. And literally young people, were leaving this state and going to airports all across, especially upstate New York, because they believed their future was somewhere else. We had one of the highest tax rates in the nation. We had a reputation for being anti-business. Well, if you have a reputation for being anti-business and you have one of the highest tax rates in the nation, you can't expect to be economically successful. You just can't. Business is immobile. They'll move, they leave, and they have been leaving New York for years. We had to turn that around. We also had a state government in Albany that was dysfunctional at best. So you had all these problems, all these challenges in the state. You looked to the government for help, and the government, if anything, was a joke. Literally on, on late night TV, they would kid about the shenanigans that were going on in Albany. So we said we had to have a fundamental transformation plan for the state. That this was not going to be easy, it was not going to be marginal, it was not going to be incremental. We really had to make fundamental change. And we had to start by transforming the economy. Why? Because the economy is the best thing we can do from a state government point of view. The best thing you can do for someone is to get them a job and let them do for themselves and let them have opportunity and let them have that hope to make their way up the American ladder of opportunity. That's the best thing you can do. The best thing the state can do is foster an economy. So Mayor Palmieri and Mayor Fusco, they have their own economy and their own tax base, and the county executive has his own tax base. So get that economy running again. Change the perception that New York is anti-business by changing the reality that New York isn't anti-business. And we said we're going to do two things. First, we're going to lower the tax rate, lower the barriers, change that reality, and then change that perception, and then we're going to incentivize growth. So we started by reducing taxes. Last year, we reduced taxes, listen to this, to the lowest tax rate for the middle class in 58 years, believe it or not. That's what we did last December. If you're making between $30,000 and $300,000, which is a very wide bracket, you're paying taxes now at the lowest rate in 58 years. We then said step two is we have to stimulate and incentivize the economy. And that's the New York Works program that puts in place a property tax cap that will control local spending, does what's called pension reform to bring down the cost of the public pensions, which were killing this state, just the cost of the long-term cost of the retirement benefits, the state can't afford. You put those pieces together with a real stimulus agenda, which is investing in projects that the state needs to do anyway. That's what the senator was talking about. We have roads and bridges that need to be rebuilt all across the state. We also need jobs. Put one and one together and you're going to get three in this case because there's going to be a synergy. So invest in the infrastructure redevelopment now, about 200 miles of roads in central New York, eight bridges, rebuild the parks, rebuild the sewer system, now is the time to do it. That's what this transformation plan is all about on the economy. It then looks at the second priority, public education system in this state, which has been struggling for years. And rather than just throwing money at the education system, and rather than saying to the taxpayer, the answer is more money, more money, more money, we took a different approach. Because the truth about public education is this. This is the one fact you need to know about our public education system. We spend more money per pupil than any state in the nation. More money per pupil than any state in the nation. 
we're number 38 in terms of graduation rates. Think about that. You spend more money than anyone, and you're number 38 in graduation rates. And for a lot of years, we said the answer is just spend more money. It's not about more money. It's about the performance of the system. It's about what you're buying with your money. The spending rate has been going up and up and up, and our performance hasn't been increasing. Start measuring the performance. Start evaluating. Start managing. And that's what we're starting this year. First time ever a teacher evaluation system is put in place. Meaning what? Meaning we'll, we'll evaluate teachers in a classroom. And we'll find out what works and what doesn't work. And when you find out what works, replicate it. And when you find a teacher who's struggling, get that teacher help. But you'll have an evaluation system for a classroom, which means you'll have an evaluation system for a school, which means you'll have an evaluation for a school district. And now we can actually measure performance and achievement. And that's what students have deserved all along. We passed a, the first statewide teacher evaluation system. And now we're saying to local districts all across the state, you adopt your own evaluation system based on the state system. And if you do it, the state will give you increased funding. And we're going to increase aid to education 4%. But if you don't come up with an evaluation system, the state will not give you the 4% additional money. Why? Because it's about time someone insists that government performs and government does its job, and it's not just more money for the bureaucracy and more layers of government. We want to educate students. That's what the public education system is all about. Not growing a bureaucracy, but educating kids. And this realigns our priorities in the public education system once and for all, because it is about kids, and it is about the evaluation, making the, an evaluation system, making sure these kids are getting the best education possible. We did that this year. We also did one other thing which I'm excited about, something called an all crimes DNA bill. And even I'm too old to fully appreciate this, but DNA is really going to be the breakthrough going forward, even in the area of public safety and criminal justice. DNA is the modern day fingerprint. And DNA, you see it on TV and um, these law and order shows, where they look for the DNA, it's actually true. It is remarkable from an evidentiary point of view. And it can be left, it can be tested, uh, it is very, very accurate, and DNA can be used to both prove guilt and it can be used to exonerate, to prove innocence. It just gets you the truth. So the more DNA samples you have, then the better the information system. We passed a law in New York first in the nation where anyone who commits a crime will give a DNA sam sample called an all crimes DNA and we'll have the best data bank in the nation to actually do justice and find the truth. So we've made a lot of progress over the past year and a half or so. Um, and probably more than anything else, and we were chatting about it inside, we made government work better. I'm not saying that the state government is working like a fine Swiss watch. It's really not. But is it at least ticking? Yes. And it's working better than it has in decades. And I was thinking, as the senator and the assemblyman was speaking, you know, I think it was this simple. Last year, your members, Joe Anthony, myself, we got to know each other and we had a conversation. And we all knew the state was in trouble, and we all knew that the state government wasn't working. And we basically made this simple agreement. Everybody has politics. There are Democrats, there are Republicans, there are conservatives, there are liberals, there are independents, all different flavors. That's nice. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has their own politics. But the politics can't get in the way of progress. And the politics can't go first and stymie government. We've seen that too many times in too many places, where everyone plays their own politics, and they forget about the people, where all the legislators always vote the same way. All the Democrats vote one way, all the Republicans vote the other way. Whatever the issue is, 
They all vote one way. It can be a very obscure issue. What color should we paint the, the wall? All the Democrats go one way, all the Republicans go the other way. How can it be? It means they've been putting their political affiliation ahead of the interests of the people in their district. And that they were voting party alliance instead of voting in the public interest. And we agreed that we would change that. And credit to this New York State Legislature, the Senate and the Assembly, because of, for the first time, they said, we're not Democrats first, we're not Republicans first, we're New Yorkers first. And we're going to act that way. And they put their politics aside, and they came together, and they compromised like reasonable people of goodwill, and said, let's make sure this government works for the people. And let's have progress, and let's get something done, and let's change the trajectory of this state for the better. And that is exactly what they have done for the past year and a half. And passing this budget, passing it on time, closing a $2 billion deficit, no new taxes, lowering taxes to the lowest rate in 58 years, an investment agenda in New York State, a New York State that is safer, a New York State that has a better education system than ever before, that's not a bad day's work. And my credit and my kudos and my applause go to the members of the New York State Legislature, your Senator Griffo and Anthony Brandisi, Assemblyman, and I want to thank them for their cooperation and ask them to join me in signing the bill now. Thank you for having us. Come on in.